most of us feel safe in our own homes. It's our sanctuary away from the outside world. When there are problems taking place outside, you can always go home and relax in the refuge of your own home. You can even lock your door, especially at night, to keep whatever's creeping around outside in the darkness from entering your safe space. Sometimes, though, the danger comes from within. On July 2nd, 1951, a woman went to one of her tenants' apartments in St. Petersburg, Florida. She had received a telegram for 67-year-old Mary Reeser and went to deliver it at about 8 a.m. that morning. When she knocked on the door, she got no answer, and when she checked the handle, it was unusually warm, so the landlady called the police. On the scene, officers made entry into the apartment and found a pile of ashes in the middle of the floor. The remains of the easy chair she had been sitting in were clearly identifiable along with her left foot, still in a slipper, part of her backbone, and her skull, which is said to have shrunken to the size of a teacup. Objects around where the fire had been had clearly been affected by the heat, but the only thing that had burned completely was Mary and her chair. Heat had even melted candles down to puddles, but the wicks were all unburned. A newspaper nearby wasn't even singed. Mary became known to the world as the Cinder Lady, and her case became known as a case of spontaneous human combustion. There have been other instances of people around the world burning to death without anything else around them catching fire, but there's only been one victim of the mythical danger who survived his wounds. 66-year-old Jack Angel was a traveling clothing salesman who lived and worked out of a motorhome. On the evening of November 2, 1974, he parked his RV in the parking lot of a Ramada Inn in Savannah, Georgia and went to sleep. According to Jack, he woke up four days later covered in burns. He said that his right arm was burned from his wrist down to his fingertips. He also said he had burns on his face, chest, and groin, but his pajamas and his bed were completely unburned. Some accounts say he was in shock, and others say he didn't feel any pain, so he showered and got dressed. But either way, he walked from his motorhome to the hotel's office where he collapsed. Jack woke up in Savannah Memorial Hospital a few days later, and despite his external wounds, he was in perfect health. A severe infection had caused the doctors to amputate his right arm, but otherwise he was recovering just fine. The doctors said that they believed that the burning started from inside Jack's body, but they couldn't explain how that might have happened. Jack believed that something inside the motorhome was the cause of the burns, but an extensive search of the vehicle found no flaws that could have caused his injuries. Despite the evidence that nothing in the motorhome caused his injuries, Jack filed a $3 million lawsuit against the Avco Corporation, who manufactured the recreational vehicle. During the proceedings, Jack's claim wasn't going well, so he changed his story and claimed that he had been scalded when he was trying to fix the water pressure in his motorhome. Since there had been an extensive search of his vehicle and no problems had been found, his lawsuit was dismissed. It's never been determined whether or not Jack was burned by an accident with the hot water in his motorhome, or if he was really a victim of spontaneous combustion. There are details in each version of the story that contradict the other, making them both plausible. After Mary Reeser's remains were discovered, the local authorities were completely stumped as to what had happened to her. It takes a human body several hours at 1400 degrees Fahrenheit or 760 degrees Celsius to fully turn to ash. Authorities also got a number of strange tips, like one from a man who claimed he had seen a ball of fire go through an open window in her apartment and hit her. Another person claimed that Mary was murdered, cremated off-site, and then her remains were returned to the apartment. With the local authorities completely stumped, they sent a box of evidence to the then-director of the FBI, J. Edgar Hoover. 
Investigators there determined that Mary had died due to the wick effect. That is when a body is completely consumed by fire due to the clothing absorbing fat as it burns, turning it into a wick to cause the entire body to burn. Otherwise, part of the body might burn and then the fire will go out. The wick effect causes the entire body to burn for a long period of time, essentially cremating it. They discovered that Mary had taken sleeping pills before settling into her easy chair to smoke her evening cigarette. She must have fallen asleep had the cigarette fallen to her nightgown which was made out of a flammable rayon material and went up in flames. The floor was concrete and the chair wasn't close enough to any other flammable materials for the fire to spread. Dr. Wilton M. Krogman, a physical anthropologist from the University of Pennsylvania, was a consultant on the Reeser case. He didn't believe that Mary would have been able to be completely cremated inside the apartment without more damage being done to the interior of the dwelling. He also said that the heat needed to cremate a body would have caused the skull to explode, not shrink. The process of fully cremating Mary's body would have taken several hours, and it was strange that nobody else in the area would have noticed the smoke or smelled the burning body. It is yet another case that will never be fully proven. There have been many cases of possible spontaneous human combustions all over the world from the 17th century until as recently as 2010. In every case, authorities may have theories about how the subject died, but the exact cause of death has remained a mystery with spontaneous human combustion still being a viable theory. So you can lock your door at night and try to protect yourself with weapons or self-defense skills. But in the end, what kills you may just be an uncontrollable burning from within. Thanks for letting us tell you this sinister story. If you enjoyed it, subscribe on whatever platform you're on and hit like, rate it, or leave a comment. Join us next week when we'll take you somewhere sinister.